Hi, this is Andrew Parks, and I'd like to welcome you to the Canterbury Gameplay video. Some of our Quixotic team members are going to walk us through the game, including Chris and Gabby, and Manny and Billy. Please note that this is a prototype board, and some of these components won't match those in the actual game. The game board represents the city of Canterbury and its 25 districts. The city is divided into three areas the central district, the inner districts, and the outer districts. Within each district are six building spaces that can be filled with structure tokens. Small structures take up one building space, medium structures take up two building spaces, and large structures take up four building spaces. Each district also displays the six services that can become available there. Water, food, religion, defense, commerce, and culture. Beside the board is a structure sideboard, and all of the structures in the game are stacked on top of their respective spaces at the start of the game. Each player chooses a color and receives a player board and 50 wooden cubes of that color. Each player places one cube on his or her player board to mark which action they'll take each round. They each place another cube on the zero space on the prosperity track that surrounds the board, and six more cubes beside the king's bonus chart, which tracks the type of services, water, food, etc., that they have provided to the city throughout the game. The city isn't completely empty at the start of the game. There is an old Roman well that starts off in the central district and provides water for that district. Since the city's color is purple, a purple cube starts off beneath the water icon for that district at the start of the game. The city also has a special marker on the prosperity track. Whenever a structure is built in the city, it provides points both to the city and to the player who built it. Since the old Roman well is worth one prosperity point, we'll start the city off on the one space. Each player also starts off with six gold, a reference chart, and a rank marker. Choose one player to go first. That player gets the rank token with the number one, the Saxon Prince, and each player in clockwise order then receives the next rank token. These rank tokens will help balance out starting positions throughout the game. Note that the starting turn order is the only random element in the entire game. There are no phases in Canterbury. On your turn, you simply choose one of the three actions on your player board and place your cube on that action. After performing that action, your turn is over. The next player in clockwise order chooses an action, and then the next player, and so on throughout the game. You keep doing this until the city has circled the board three times, which signals the final round of the game. During the first round of play, everyone has to perform a full build action, so let's begin there. When performing a full build action, a player must build one or two buildings of his or her choice. They have to build in a district that already has buildings, or one that is orthogonally adjacent to a district that already has buildings. Orthogonal is just a fancy way of saying not diagonal. Gabby is the Saxon prince, so she goes first. She decides to build a well and a garden. In the upper left corner of each structure is the cost. A well costs one gold and a garden costs two gold, so Gabby pays three gold to build her structures. In order to build a structure, all the services that precede the service provided by the structure have to be present from left to right. In the upper right corner of each structure is a service icon that indicates which service that building provides. A garden provides food, which is the next service available after water. Since the old Roman well is providing water in the central district, Gabby places her garden there, so now there's food and water there. Gabby places one of her colored cubes as a service marker beneath the food icon in that district. Now she places her well in an adjacent district. A well provides water, the most basic service, so Gabby places one of her service markers beneath the water icon in that district. Now we update the king's bonus chart. One player is in charge of keeping track of this throughout the game. Since Gabby provided one water and one food this turn, her service markers move up on the king's bonus chart for those services. 
At the end of the game, the players with the most and second most of each service will score a king's bonus. Now it's time to score points for this turn. In the lower left corner of each structure is the city prosperity number, which is how much the city scores. The well was worth one point and the garden was worth two points, so the city marker advanced three spaces on the prosperity track. In the lower right corner of each structure token is the player prosperity number. For low level services, this number is usually the same as for the city. For higher end services, the player often earns a little more. In this case, the well was worth one point and the garden was worth two points, so Gabby advances three spaces on the prosperity track. The last thing you do during a full build is score bonus prosperity points. There are four different types of bonuses outlined on the player's reference chart. One of them that we already mentioned was the King's bonus for providing the most of each service, but this is only provided at the end of the game. Another bonus is the Breaking Ground bonus, which is awarded if a player builds the first structure in a particular district. The number of points is equal to the number of services in that district at the end of the turn. Since there's only one service in the new district where Gabby built, she only scores a breaking ground bonus of one point. Since larger buildings can provide services to adjacent districts, later in the game there may be districts with lots of services being pumped into them with no structures inside them, so this breaking ground bonus can get really big towards the end of the game. Now it's Chris's turn. Once again, since it's his first turn of the game, he has to perform a full build. He decides to build a garden and a chapel, so he pays five gold and takes those buildings. He wants to try to take over Gabby's district, so he places both of his buildings there. He then places his cubes beneath the food and religion icons in that district. The most important prosperity bonus in the game is district favor, which is scored each time the city marker circles around the board and also once at the end of the game. Having the most service markers in a district will win you the points for that district, so Chris is hoping to stay ahead in that district for a long time. Chris's service markers advance on the appropriate tracks on the King's bonus chart. The city moves up five spaces, and so does Chris's score marker. Now it's Manny's turn and he spends two gold to build two wells. He places them in two different districts. Since he places buildings one at a time, he can place the second one pretty far away from the center. He places his service markers in each district and advances two spaces on the water track on the King's bonus chart. The city scores two points and Manny scores four points two points for the buildings themselves, and two for breaking ground in two districts, each with a single service at the end of the turn. Billy pays three gold to build a well and a garden, and places them in a new district. After placing both of his service markers in that district, and moving forward on the King's bonus chart, he advances the city marker three spaces, and then advances his own marker five spaces, his buildings are worth three points, and he scores a breaking ground bonus of two points, since the place where he broke ground has two service markers in it at the end of the turn. Now it's Gabby's turn again. Now that the first turn is over, she can choose any action she likes, so she decides to levy funds to get more gold and moves her action marker to indicate this. To determine how much gold she raises, she looks at the city marker's position on the prosperity track, and then references the treasury bar that runs alongside it. In this case, since the city marker moved forward into the next section of the prosperity track, the treasury bar indicates that she receives six gold. If the city marker were much further along, she'd collect more. So if, for example, it were on the 65 space, she'd collect 11 gold. Each time the city marker passes the zero mark, you place a purple city disc beneath the marker to represent 100 prosperity points. When levying funds from that point onward, you add plus 10 gold for each city disc beneath the city marker. 
So if the city were up to 114 points, for example, you would collect 16 gold when levying funds. As you can see, as the city grows more prosperous, it benefits everyone. In fact, when you build a large structure, it may push the city marker very far ahead and allow all players to start levying funds for a much higher amount. Okay, now it's Chris's turn again. He also decides to levy funds for six gold. As you can see, when you levy funds, your turn is quick and you can start planning ahead for how you'll spend that gold on your next turn. Manny wants to build again this turn, so he decides to perform the third type of action, tax and build. When you tax and build, you do a little bit of each of the other two actions. So the first thing you do is tax, and this gets you one half the gold you would normally get if you levied funds. So in this case, instead of getting six gold, Manny gets three gold. Next, Manny can build one structure, instead of two like in a full build. He had some gold saved up from last turn, so he spends four gold on a watchtower which he places in the only district that can support it, the one with Chris and Gabby. Now there's three people vying for control there. Manny places a service marker there to indicate he's providing defense there. The city gains four points, and Manny gains five points as indicated on the structure token. The reason it gives better points than other buildings is that it provides a higher end service, which means it's a little bit more difficult to place on the table. Now Billy is up and he also performs a tax and build. He collects three gold and spends it on a chapel, which he places in his own little district. Now that he has three service markers there, he only has to place one more to guarantee that he'll score first place for district favor there for the rest of the game. Both he and the city score three points. Now we're back to Gabby's turn, and she now has to spend some of the money she levied last turn. As you can see from the arrow in the text on her player board, when you perform a levy funds action, you must perform a full build on the following turn. You don't have to build much if you don't want to, but you have to build at least one structure. She decides to build a merchant stall in the hotly contested district. It costs five gold and provides commerce to the district, which now ties her with Chris for the lead in that district. Now we're going to move a few more turns in and see the first medium structure get built. Depending on the players, these structures sometimes start getting built as early as the third turn of the game. These structures are very important because they provide their service not only to the district where they're placed, but also to all orthogonally adjacent districts. So by this turn, Manny has built up enough gold that he wants to build a fountain and a garden, which cost him a total of 12 gold. Manny places the fountain in an empty district and places four water service markers on the board. Now as you can see, he could have placed five markers except for the fact that there was already a water service marker in one of the adjacent districts. And this is an example of a very important rule in the game. Once a service marker is on the board, it can never be removed by any means. Therefore, you want to play medium structures as early as you can so you can spread as many of your service markers on the board as possible. Now Manny places the garden that he also purchased on the board in an empty district. Note that there is water in that district even though there are no structures there. That's because of the fountain that Manny just placed next door. Now Manny is going to score a breaking ground bonus of three since he broke ground in this district which has one service marker in it at the end of the turn, and in this district where he has two service markers at the end of the turn. Now Billy's up, and he wants to place a church in a district that already has a chapel. Since they both provide the same service, the church is considered an upgrade of the chapel, so Billy demolishes the chapel by removing it from the board and replaces it with the church. Although Billy doesn't get to replace the religion service marker there, he does get to place religion markers in the surrounding districts. Also, Billy scores the last type of prosperity bonus, the enrichment bonus, which gives him an extra three points for demolishing a structure and replacing it with a larger version that provides the same service. Large structures are worth variable player prosperity points, depending upon where in the city they are built. 
If built in the central district, they are worth the amount shown on the left number. If built in one of the inner districts that surround the central district, they are worth the amount shown on the middle number. If built in one of the outer districts, they are worth the amount shown on the right number. Large structures can be worth a lot of points, but sometimes it's worth more points to build two medium structures instead of one large structure. The real value of large structures is that they allow you to place five service markers representing that structure's service anywhere in the city. This can be vital to stealing district favor in a particular district, or to gain control of a particular service on the King's bonus chart. Each time the city marker circles the board, we score district favor bonuses. We basically look to see who has the most service markers in each district. That player scores the primary bonus. Then we look to see who has the second most district favor. That player scores the secondary bonus, which is half of the primary bonus rounded down. So how do we determine how much each district is worth? Basically, the number of building spaces that are covered in a district determines how many points that district is worth. So this district is worth four points, for example. Let's look at a few different districts during a typical district favor scoring round. In this district, blue has the most district favor and so scores a primary bonus of six points because six building spaces are covered. Red comes in second place and scores three points. In the central district, red has the most district favor. It only scores three points because the old Roman well doesn't count when determining the district favor bonus. In this district, green has the most district favor and scores six points because six building spaces are covered. Yellow comes in second and gets three points. Once the city marker has circled the board for the third time, it stops on the 301 space and doesn't advance any further. After scoring district favor for the third time, you keep playing until the player with the highest numbered rank token has gone, and then everyone gets one more turn. So everyone gets an equal number of turns during the game. Afterwards, you score district favor for the fourth and final time. Then you score the king's bonus. For each service, you check to see who has provided the most of that service to the entire city. That player receives the bonus points on the gold number beneath their service marker. The player who has provided the second most of that service to the entire city receives the bonus points on the blue number beneath their service marker. After scoring all six of the king's bonuses, each player receives one point for every three gold he or she has left. Then the player with the most points wins the game. Well done, Gabby.